Hi, Cat's Cradle here. I've been wanting to show you how to make crepes for several years. I know there's a lot of crepe videos out there, but we do it a little differently. We don't use a fancy crepe pan. We just use a very good nonstick skillet. Uh, some people think it's too hard to make them like that, but I'm going to show you how easy it is here. I like crepes because they use staples that you have on hand. Milk, eggs, a little salt and sugar, oil and some flour, and of course a little bit of water. They're so easy to make. You can make them anytime. You can make them sweet or savory depending on what kind of filling you use. And they're so versatile. I just love how you can put a piece of wax paper in between your crepes once they've cooled and you can put them in the freezer. In fact, we did that this weekend. We put them in the freezer thinking we were done with them for the weekend and then decided to to make some sweet crepes one night and pulled them right out of the freezer and they just freeze so beautifully. At this point, you want to let the crepe batter rest. There are several reasons for that. You see the bubbles that are at the top of the batter, you want them to dissipate. Also, letting it rest improves the flavor and the texture. Now, a lot of people would go ahead and just pour their crepes at this point, and you certainly can do that. And unless you have a very discriminating palate, you won't notice a lot of difference in the taste. I can tell when they've rested. And so I like to put my batter in the refrigerator for about an hour. Uh, you can even let it rest overnight. You can make up your batter at night and then make your crepes the next morning. Uh, it can rest uh, for a good while. If you pour it with the bubbles, sometimes the bubble will weaken the structure of, a, of the crepe and will, uh, when you're pulling it out of the pan, will sometimes leave a little hole. So just, you know, do it however you like it, but I highly recommend letting your batter rest for at least an hour before pouring your crepes. That turkey sitting on a plate of sand and a couple of miniature uh, actors. And I'm off camera, the wind is blowing, the sand is blowing. Prepper A was home from college this weekend and was the one who really wanted crepes and wanted me to narrate this video after it was shot. But as I'm sitting here looking at it, the beauty of watching this child work just needs no, no, uh, no narration. So I'm just going to let you enjoy this master uh, cook at work and... Uh, I'll come back at the end just for a, a little bit of narration to finish up. So, enjoy Prepare Making Crepes.
noticed how Prepare gently used a spatula on or a pancake turner on the back side of the pan to gently coax the edge of the crepe away from the pan in order to be able to provide a little handle to lift it to lift it out. Here's what we were left with, this stack of uh, about a dozen crepes. The recipe is just perfect uh, if, if you want a dozen. Here's a plate of ground pork and spinach crepes we had for supper that was co covered with a, a very delicate bechamel, really good. But what crepes are most noted for, especially here in the States, are for being filled with something sweet. And here are some crepes that are filled with Nutella and topped with a, a pretty sliced strawberry and sprinkled with some confectioner's sugar. I hope this video helps to eliminate any fears you may have about making crepes. If a teenager can do it, you can do it. These are delicious and versatile. A great thing to have in your freezer for a quick dessert or a quick supper. And they're so inexpensive and made with staples that you would normally have in your kitchen. Until next time, this is Cat's Cradle.